Hi, this is Dominic from Paphos Life, and this is part two of our four-part series around the top part of uh, the Azusa Valley. And we're just leaving Canaview Dam, which is where we left you at the end of part one. And from here we'll be heading to Espoia, followed by Panopanaya, and then we're going to come back down through the abandoned village of Statos. Here we go. And we're going to finally finish uh, a Pentalia. Now, we were going to go to Ayas Photios, but the road was closed, so we couldn't, which is why we made that little diversion. But uh, you'll see that later on. We're now heading up the road to Asboya which used to be a mixed village of Greek and Turkish Cypriots. But uh, in the mid 60s, there was intercommunal fighting and the Turkish Cypriots left and went to a nearby village of Anadiu. There's a mosque up there, which is still kept in good repair. And there's a nice little picnic spot where we'll see them soon. You'll also notice on the way up though, that there were numerous signposts leading you uh, onto tracks that lead down into Paphos Forest itself. Now, if you've got a four by four and you've got insurance, then by all means go for a drive down then because it's great fun. It's not like Bear grill sort of stuff. I mean, the roads are uh, perfectly okay, but if you're in a non-car, if you're in a non-four wheel drive, you could find it a bit heavy going. And also if you're in a car rental, your insurance won't cover you, so bear that in mind. But if you do get the chance to go down there and you're fully covered, etc., then you will have a nice drive and see some amazing countryside. You'll also discover a few little churches as well. In the distance here, you can see Pan uh, Panopanea. I actually did a film, uh, I think it was the winter before last, when this uh, route was just covered in snow. I had the camera on the roof of the car and I, I didn't even get out of Polemi and I had to stop because basically the camera turned into a huge snowball. So it does get cold in the winter times around here. But it also means it's not as hot in the summer. So if you want to break from the heat, you can come up here. Right, here we are entering Asproya. And you can see in the graphic I chose there, it's got snow on it. And there's a, a nice picnic spot, which gives you a good view. And there's the mosque I mentioned. And the village itself is on that road to the right. I'm not bothering to drive through it because there's not a lot to see there. Oh. No disrespect meant to it, but it's just a small, a little, a uh, small village. Somewhere up here is a funny little shrine I seem to remember. I think I might have just passed it actually. I keep an eye out for it though. It's the Bon Voyage sign that they always have. I don't know why we decided to drop to French for that, but there you go. You'll see a lot of vineyards around here because there are, well, basically there's wineries all over the place and the hills you see in the distance, if you actually go up to them, you'll see it's just, it's like a plateau covered in vineyards. It's very nice up there. I've only been up there a couple of times, but the views up there are stunning, and I'll do a film of that uh, sometime in the future so you can see it for yourself. One of the things I love about the Cyprus countryside is how much it varies between seasons. And I don't really mean like all four seasons, but if you have like hot season and cold season or more accurately dry season and rainy season. Uh, during the dry summer months, most of Cyprus is golden brown pastures, 
bit of a fire risk, but uh, it it looks like uh, you're in an episode of Little House on the Prairie almost, or something like that, or you're in a spaghetti western. And the winter time, you could be in a valley in Wales. It just changes so radically. And it's always a surprise as well. Each winter when the fields go green, it's like, wow, what a transformation. And ditto in May, June, when the green turns to brown again. It's like you're in two different places. Now, when you're surrounded by vineyards, it's less of an obvious transition because they tend to stay green for most of the year. But if this is in one of the valleys lower down, you'd see more what I meant. Now, there's a winery just here. We're going past. And we're coming into the, I wouldn't say foothills, but the outskirts of uh, Panopanaya. Now, this is a bit of a tourist attraction, uh, this village. Partly, I guess, because it's like one of the main gateways to Paphos Forest and the Trudos Mountains. I mean, it's, it's the main uh, things you can get to from here would be uh, Kikos Monastery, for instance, uh, and Cedar Valley, if you like the country, seeing some nice pretty trees. But we're not going into the forest today. We're going to be looping through the village and out the other side. But if you're hungry or thirsty, this would be a good place to stop if you're following this route for a bite to eat or drink. Oh, speaking of which, this route follows the latter part of our first road trip ebook. So if you want a more detailed guide, I would uh, get yourself a copy of that. You download it onto your tablet or phone off Amazon. And it'll give you more information. We see it's a very pretty village. There's a lot of history around this village as well. Archbishop Macarius III, excuse the pronunciation, was born here. He was the founding ruler of Cyprus when they got independence from the UK. And there's a statue of him on your right. There's the main church, and we're coming through that. On our left, just back there, was a start of a nature trail that goes to the top of the cliffs you can see on the left. And if you're fit, that's an amazing walk, and the views at the top, are just, I mean, the views here are, love, are lovely as it is, but the views from the top are something extra special. I took one of my favourite pictures of Cyprus from up the top there. And from Panopanea we'll come to a couple of monasteries. I'm not even going to begin to try and pronounce the first one though. But it's a very popular tourist attraction. Because uh, the second one's more of a like, working place, but the first one it's got some amazing churches in it. Uh, we're covered in murals and icons, and you can't, you're not allowed to take pictures there, but uh, it's well worth stopping and having a look around. And they often have traditional uh, folk markets outside it. At the very least, you can often get an ice cream there. But to, to our right now is the top of, uh, upper part of Azusa Valley. I would not attempt driving down any of the side roads you get here unless you've got a very good 4x4. There's, there's not a lot to see down there either. There is a very old abandoned village and an abandoned part of the monastery. But it's very overgrown and it's uh, 
not like the abandoned villages we're about to see later on in this film. So if you want to see an abandoned village, just stay on this route. Right, this is the first monastery. This is the one that you'll probably want to stop at and have a look around. Park there. And as I said, go and have a look at the church at the very least. But the whole place is very nice. The next monastery is, I believe, is where monks actually are working, I don't know whether they're making olive oil or whatever it is that they do, <laughs> other than pray. But uh, we won't, I, I've never actually gone inside there. I don't even know if you can. It just seems weird going into somewhere, uh, somebody's place of work and saying, can I have a look around? But it's a good landmark because just after it is the turning you need to take to get to Statos. Now there are two abandoned villages along the route that the first road trip takes. I'm being a bit coy there because the second one you can't get to it, well you probably can now, but when I drove this route the road was closed because they were repairing it. But uh, there was Statos and Aos Photios and whether it was an earthquake or landslides because of excess rain, I can't remember, but uh, 50 odd years ago, they decided uh, to abandon both villages and they built a new one, uh, which you'll get to if you just follow this road, called Statos Aeos Photios. And that's like on the top of the hill and the two villages were left, well, just to nature, really. I mean, a couple of uh, the buildings in both are still inhabited, and if you turn right here, we'll be going to the first of them, Statos. Yeah, a couple of the buildings are still inhabited, so don't think you can just go there and explore wherever you want to. You use some common sense. It is obvious which houses are abandoned though, because they'll have bloody great holes in them. Now this road, after heavy rain, can get washed out in places and can also have landslides on top of it, which helps to explain why they abandoned the village. And there are a couple of uh, parking places along here where you can stop to take photographs of the view. There's one. You can see more what I was saying about the golden brown pastures now as well. When you're not surrounded by vineyards, it's more obvious. And there's the top of the Azusa Valley in all its glory. Here's a good viewpoint just up ahead if you want to stop. And now we will start seeing some buildings appear as we get into the outskirts of Statos. And at the start, it doesn't look too bad. You might think, oh, a bit of renovation work going on there. And there's even one of the buildings up here had a for sale sign on it. And there's a car outside, which probably started last about 40 years ago. See, that doesn't look too bad, though. But it soon deteriorates. Now, be very careful if you do explore any of the old ruins here because 
it's built on a hill and the houses have multiple layers so there could well be a layer a floor below where you're standing and the floor isn't necessarily very good this is especially true if you go into any of the buildings on the right of this road on the left it doesn't really matter so much because it's built into the hill but on the right there are some definite gaping holes you should be aware of there's more buildings on the left if you take one of the tracks you're better off walking up there though and there's a church up there as well if you're completist but that was Statos and it's well worth having a look around there because it's a fascinating place and there's a nice church there as well that turning we just went past there if you can't get to Aeos Photios by the main route you can actually get that way and it's off road for a bit but it's a, a well used farm uh, road and you you won't have any problems driving on it some more vineyards here and soon we'll come to a turning left which takes us uh, up to the new village of Statos Aeos Photios but we'll be ignoring that and going straight on but if you ever come for a Statio Statos Aeos Photios festival then this is a good way of getting to it and parking somewhere without getting too much involved in the parking mayhem. Now from Statos, if we were following the Road Trip e-book that I mentioned, we would be turning right up ahead and going through Aeos Photios, but we can't in this film. So instead we're driving on to uh, the outskirts of Pentalia. And uh, in later films we'll go from there to, through Amargeti and Lamona and rejoin the road trip route uh, on this side of Hulu and from there we go to Letimbu and back to Palemi to form a nice ring. Here's the turning for Aeos Photos that we couldn't do and you can either take the route we mentioned before or follow this route that we're doing now if you want to continue back to Palemi. Before we go, I would just like to say, if you like our films, please do subscribe to the channel because more people subscribe, the more the films get boosted by YouTube and the more people see them. So the more people see them, the more films we make. Simple as that, basically. Uh, and also share the film on Facebook or wherever you can share stuff. And just let other people enjoy what you're enjoying. Worth noting as well that this road and the road on the other side of the ridge we're approaching fairly regularly needs to get repaired because of landslides. And it does emphasize why the people of Statos and Aeos Photios had to move when they did. Now we're approaching the main road again. This is the road we turned right off when we went past the two monasteries. The road uh, will have gone through uh, the new village of Status Aeos Photios and we're just rejoining it now. Make sure you look left because some cars go down this one rather quickly. And we'll leave you with a nice view of the Zeros Valley, which we actually, I stopped here and uh, flew my drone, if you've seen that footage. Now you know why I made it. Oh, one other thing, if you do want to support us as well, use the link in the text description to the Buy Us A Coffee page. Uh, believe it or not, some people do, and uh, it does all help, and it is appreciated. And if you do that and you want us to film somewhere in particular, just say so in the in your comments that you can leave. Okay? So there's the Zeros Valley. 
And on that, I will say see you in the next film. Part three. <laughs>